Hey there, CAD monkeys, it's that time again. Time for AutoCAD 101. Let's go ahead and bring AutoCAD over. Today, we're going to go through a couple more modified commands. Um, in particular, uh, we're going to deal with um, rotate and scale, which are very, very similar commands, although it doesn't seem like they should be, but the way they function work very similarly. We're going to look at stretch and we're going to look at array which makes multiple copies of an item in rows and columns. And we're going to also talk about how AutoCAD are a bunch of idiots, but that's something else entirely. Alright, let's start. Open your assignment 6, do a save as, and call it assignment 7. What we're going to do is we're just using these to, you know, fiddle with, just like we did the last time. Um, both rotate and scale are fairly straightforward. You pick an item, you tell it a base point, and you rotate or scale around that base point. Um, we'll do that. We're going to rotate this purple rectangle 45 degrees, um, and we'll use the middle of the rectangle as... Our rotation. Well, there is no middle of a rectangle. There's a center of a circle, but not of a rectangle. So the first thing we're going to have to do is go to layers and um, let's make Z and P1 our current layer, our non plot object. Oops. And then I'm going to do a line. And I can type today, really, I can. And that did not snap to, oh, you notice it snapped to an in the midpoint, but not the one I wanted. So let's, because I wanted to go straight up. So let's hit undo. To get what I want, we'll have to have go perpendicular. So let's type P-E-R. That forces it to use just perpendicular. Hit enter, and now it clicks where we wanted. Um, always think in terms of these, if you can, that, you know, just because... You know, you don't have to go to O snaps and turn certain things on, turn certain things off. That's an always an option. Okay, so now rotate. Our O is a shortcut for rotate. Um, we pick that. Might be a good idea to pick this one too. We'll use the midpoint. And I don't want to hover here because it might give me a midpoint on this object. So if I just stay on the line, it'll only give me that one's midpoint. And then I can tell it 45 degrees. Yay, joys and yellings. Um, pretty simple, nothing amazing. I'm going to do a separate video that goes into some further aspects of rotate um, and scale because you have what's called a reference option down here. You see I've got that reference. You also have copy. Copy would have left the original object. Um, but I'll go into detail more on that on the little sub videos we're going to do for this. Um, scale. With the scale, we're going to take the this bottom polyline here, and we're going to scale it up twice as big. Scale. You notice SC is a shortcut. You'll notice there's kind of a, um, a trend happening here. Um, and we'll pick on that. It's going to ask us what the scale factor is, and 2. Now you'll notice it also scaled up the thickness, or the width, of the, of the polyline. That's not something you wanted. Remember, you can always, you know, use your modify option and come in here and change that global width back down again. You don't have to. I'm just saying, you know, for that for the purposes of this assignment, what's here is fine. But just if you ever do something like this, that's that you may go, oh crud. Um, so that's rotate and scale. Pretty simple. The only thing to remember is pick a point to rotate or scale about that's useful to you. Um, now let's look at Array. Array used to have a nice interface. Um, way back in the Stone Age, it didn't. Everything was done from the command line down here. You had no graphical user interface stuff. It was all typing in. It was very kind of almost like a programming. Um, 
Then they made a change and we had a nice little interface that looked like this. And then some moron of a programmer at Autodesk decided, oh, let's combine the array command with the 3D array command, which doesn't only just make rows and columns, it also can make what they call levels, so it's in the z-axis, because AutoCAD can think in the z-axis. We just don't generally mess with it much. Um, and so they combine them together, but instead of making, you know, just modifying this interface, no, if you type array now, it's all from the command line. So if I pick this object, because I want to make a whole bunch of copies, enter, yes, it's a rectangular uh, array. A polar array goes about a center. We'll look at that in a minute. So I'll hit R for rectangular. It's also the default. I could just hit enter. Um, it asks me all these things. It's a dissociative, which means if I do this, all these items are kind of stuck together. They're not just, they're one item, not just a whole bunch of individual items. Um, I don't generally like that, um, but for right now, we're not going to worry about it. And we have to now put in R for rows. We'll put five. And we have to put, and what it's talking about now is the distance between the rows. So we'll put, yeah, three is fine. No, let's put four. Let's put input stuff on everything. Um, and you notice it's all these questions. It's a real pain in the butt. You really don't know what you're in per inputting. It's not very user friendly. Now we're going to type array classic. A R R A Y C L A S S I C one word. And you notice we get the old interface with none of the 3D stuff being prompted for us. Yay. Um, so now if I wanted to do the same thing, I could tell it I want five rows and six columns. You'll notice it's kind of, it'll be updating over here in a minute. See how it shows us kind of a visual graphic. Oops, no, I've got that backwards. It should be six and five. Um, we can tell it four and four. Whoops, I can type really, I can. Uh, don't forget to select your object. Of course, it'll give you an error if you don't. In this case here, we'll just do this real quick. I don't remember what I actually told you to do. And I don't remember what these numbers are. Let's say I was supposed to do 10 and 20. Let's go ahead and do what the assignment says. And I wanted four and four for the spacing. Um, oops, I was supposed to pick the lower rectangle. Oops. Um, we can preview and go, oh, look, we get a whole bunch of them. Um, it doesn't stay very long. Don't worry about that. And just hit OK. And we, we have a whole bunch of these things now. Um, you'll notice with classic array, these are individual objects. They're not stuck together in an associated array like with the new command. Um, I find that very much useful because I don't really want these as a group generally when I'm making them. Um, either works, either you decide which one you like the best. Um, now, who wants to type classic, you know, the array classic every time? Let's close this. Whoops, wrong one. Let me find it. Where did it go? Making command aliases. You've got this handout with today's stuff. This may work. It may not, depending on how your computers are set up. They may have some stuff like you can't write to certain directories. Um, but if you have this at home, um, and remember, the student version is free. So if you can show you're a student, you can download it at home. The only thing about the student version is every time you go to print, it puts this big banner all over it that says, this is a student license, blah, blah, blah. And if you ever take anything you've drawn on that version and put it on one of your, um, like let's say you're working in office, now their entire machine will be corrupt and they will be very upset. So just be cautious that if you have it at home you can't share stuff with what you draw at work but anyway command aliases you know the shortcut commands are stored in a file called acad.pgp this is what stands for program parameters um, it's a text file we can actually use a text editor to edit it there's i could show you where it actually is 
Um, luckily, we don't have to do that. Um, there is a command called alias edit that we can get to. Um, alias edit, A-L-I-A-S-E-D-I-T. It's just one of those commands that, ah, dang it. Um, be nice if I was in AutoCAD when I had done that. Um, A-L-I-A-S-E-D-I-T. Um, and it will bring this up. These are under, if I remember correctly, ex the Express Tools. It's right here. So there's an Express Tools tool palette. Click on that, and you'll find the alias editor right here. Once you scroll down this list, these are all the shortcut commands possible and the AutoCAD command that they're a shortcut for. If you, like me, I cannot stand that C is circle and CO or CP or copy, you could go in and edit it right here. Whoops, if I clicked on circle, I could go to edit and I could change that to be CR. Before you change something, go look and see if there is a CR. Oh good, CR isn't used. So I could change that if I wanted to. I won't right now because for y'all's purposes, I better stick with what's standard. Um, but speaking of which, we need to we want to make one for um, Array Classic. So we're, let's go down to the ARs. Whoops, or in this case, up to the ARs. There's an AR. There's a dash AR. There's an ARCL. Actually, there wasn't. There is now because I did this already. Um, this is what we're going to make. But you notice there wasn't an ARC or anything like that. So ARCL for us is fine. I didn't want to use ARC, Array Classic, because that sounds like the ARC command, right? So ARCL, um, let me remove it real quick. Okay, this is what you'll see. Um, so we're going to add one. So add. And then on my computer it brought it up on another screen but it'll probably come up pop up right over the front and type what you want the shortcut to be here a r c l oh, let's make it caps it doesn't matter but and then type what you want it to be here you can actually scroll down and find it but we're just going to type it because see how it's already popped up so we can just click now um and then hit ok and you'll get this, um, once you hit apply, you'll get a big warning. Oh, you're writing to this file. Do you really want to write to this file? And hit yes. Um, you'll notice it's now there in the stack. You can do more than one here. You could do a whole bunch of them. Um, and if we go, if we close this and I type ARCL, you'll notice the Array Classic now comes up. Um, these names like ARCL do not have to be intelligent at all. Um, I have set up all of my shortcut commands, for instance, so that um, they all can be done from my left hand. I've got my right hand over my mouse and I've got all my shortcut commands so that they're the left side of the keyboard. Um, there's a command called list. Let's look at that one. Which, if you do it, it'll tell you that's a polyline. It's on this layer. Here's all the parameters about it. But list, which normally is a shortcut, is li. Um, on my working computer, I have ff for list. And um, so it's stuff like that. So it's all of these just letters I can type very quickly. Increases my speed, keeps my hands from getting carpal tunnel. Um, so Modifying these, um, especially the longer commands, like rectang, you know, you could turn that into you know, something else. Um, REC is already the shortcut for rectangle, but, you know, there's nothing, I mean, you can, as long as there's not so, uh, something already in your list that's, you know, something else, you can use it. Numbers as well. Um, but anyway, that's command aliases. Um, now... You can do it in a notepad editor. It's a lot harder. 
Um, you have to find it. That's not always easy. Um, oops, you don't need the assignment part. The nice thing about this is at the very bottom of the command alias editor, you know, when you're doing it in Notepad, there's all these uh, things, and it says put all of the yours under here. And the nice thing about that is if I put C copy CR circle, I don't have to check that those are already taken. It'll always read the bottom ones first and replace them with anything, you know, with. Uh, with the stuff in the normal text file with these little handier than using this command alias editor because this one you need to kind of check and make sure everything works fine um, but if you can find the file an ACAB PDP file and it may be hidden on your machines um, that's not a bad way to do it so but anyhow um, we'll talk about this more later um, but let's go ahead and close this. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I want to do, or we just want to? I'll skip. I'll stop and do the rotate references. I think that's it. Okay, doke. All right. We'll sign off for now. Thank you very much.